welcome everyone. Welcome back. Welcome to everyone on the Zoom. We've got about as many people in the room as we have on online. So I, it's very exciting. I feel like we are living and breathing our hybrid world. Um, I am going to be brief, but I just wanted to say that I'm so excited to um, be here and be able to tell you all that we're not only back in business with our doors open, with programming, live, people showing up online and in person, experiencing our events, but we're also really launching a number of initiatives and making progress in ways that are really propelling the Institute into the future. So I'll just give you a couple of examples. I'm not going to steal Kimberly's thunder, so I'll, I'll keep some of the, the little surprises for later. But one of the things that we've started, you, you've probably have seen the scaffolding as we are starting the work on the exterior of the building to make sure that this beautiful place continues to be available to us all for our programming and our library and our chess room for many, many years to come. We have started strategic planning. So we are well into the process of making sure that we've got a really clear, crisp vision for the next three to seven years of the Institute and really clear goals that we are all working towards. And I know a number of you helped participate in that process. So thank you all again for speaking with us and providing feedback and making sure that we are continuing to meet the needs of all of our members. I very much appreciate that. Um, on that note, don't let that be the end of us hearing for you, from you. So obviously we hold these member meetings and we get feedback from you in this capacity, but definitely feel free to uh, reach out and tell us what you're thinking about, tell us your great ideas, help us know how we can better serve you at any moment. And also let us know if you'd like to volunteer. We have a number of task committees and uh, different board committees that we love members to participate in in a non-voting capacity. Or if you're interested in becoming a future board member, we'd love to know that too. Particularly coming out of the strategic planning process, we're gonna have a lot of work to do. And so we would love to have you guys be a part of that process with us. So with that, I will turn it over to Kimberly to give you some more details about what we've been working on. Oh, <laughs> I am Lindsay Tonsager. I am president of the board of trustees. Great to connect. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Lindsay, and for the full board of trustees who have been so supportive of Mechanics Institute as we uh, work on these new projects um, that she had mentioned. Um, and, you know, just to I'm using of, your earphones. Oh, I thought you might want to listen. I don't know. Um, <laughs> There's a little feedback on there. Um, so, so I think you heard and you probably have, have, have noticed the scaffolding outside. So this is a project that we've been planning for many years. And this is part I'm sure you've heard in the last few years, we've been uh, partnering with the NEH to be able to, to restore the building. And this is something we need to do in order to make sure that the building continues to be able to serve us. Uh, we are focusing on that one wall that's sort of the east wall, which is our sort of most, uh, most in need. And um, so so far, we just had a building meeting this morning, and so far everything seems to be going well, and we are on target. The project will last probably about another five to eight months, depending on supply chain and other things like that, uh, but we're confident that, that things will continue to go well in that regard. I also anticipate that folks might be wondering what we're doing in terms of our hours. And so the library will be expanding hours. Right now we're staffing up, so we are hiring more folks. We probably will be focusing on uh, opening more in the evening hours right now because the construction that's taking place is a bit noisy in the morning. <laughs> yes, so about 10 or 11, and we really don't want folks to, um, to, to have to experience that while they're in the library. So that is, that is a key consideration. Uh, we are, again, open 12 to 6 so far, Monday through Friday, and uh, 10 to 3 on Saturday. So if you haven't been to the library lately, we invite you to come by. Our chess room is also open um, 11 to 5 every day or during the week. So please stop by. More and more folks are just stopping in to play a game of chess at lunch or just to get to know other folks. So we really welcome you to, to join us there as well. Um, in terms of programming, a couple of quick announcements. I mentioned the NEH. We actually uh, got a large NEH grant for programming as well, and that's really enabled us to grow what we're doing in terms of our author events, film events, and other activities. And so that's been very exciting. That's been a large grant. 
And in addition, last week, we just learned that we uh, received the NEA, the National Endowment for the Arts, Big Read Grant, which is uh, basically a, year, a year's worth of doing programming around one book and the theme that it, it represents. So we're doing Interior Chinatown, and we will be working and partnering with other organizations locally um, and putting on a whole series of different types of events. So we encourage you to stay tuned, and we will be sharing more of that soon as well. Um, in addition, um, we are having, uh, we're doing strategic planning, and so that is entails us reaching out. I think probably all of you hopefully received our member survey. We appreciate any feedback you have, and it's not too late. You can always let us know what's going on. And we also have, we, so we can make sure if you don't, have, if you haven't received it, we might not have your email, so we can get that for sure. We had some print versions in the library as well, but we're always welcome feedback. And as part of that process is really making sure that we are continuing to meet the needs of the members and the folks who come to our programs. Um, as part of that, we've also sort of looked at our priorities and are realigning a few things. Uh, we are bringing on some new staff, which is very exciting. We have a new development director starting next week. And in addition, um, one of our members, um, our staff members has, uh, who's in operations, and I'll introduce her in a moment, has agreed, generously agreed to take on more responsibility. She was initially uh, the library manager and then moved into operations and now will be overseeing building and library operations and will be a senior director. Uh, Bobby Manzan uh, will sort of share a few things as well. So thank you very much, really appreciate it. I have to boot this, sorry, I'm a little short. Um, Hi everyone, um, you may not have seen me in the library the last five years, I've been upstairs, but as Kimberly mentioned, I was the manager there for a couple of years. And so coming back into the library is something I've been wanting to do since I first went upstairs. And uh, so I'm happy to come back and work with you all. And I'm eager to get to know you all once again. Um, I only really just started going back into the library this week, so I don't have a lot to share, but I am also helping with the, the building project. And so my time is kind of uh, shared between these two big parts of the Institute. Um, I do quickly want to acknowledge the staff that are here. Um, Craig, Craig in the library, I'm sure you all know. Uh, Hannah with membership, she's right there. Um, Miles is helping with the AV. He'll also be talking about our library programming and Stephen. Um, Taryn is helping with the Zoom here. And if there's any other staff members I missed, uh, my apologies, but we all work very hard for you here at the Institute. So um, again, I look forward to meeting you all again in the library. And now Laura will come and talk about some of our programming here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bobby. I'm Laura Shepard, Director of Events here. And I just want to thank the board and the staff and also a big shout out to our volunteers who assist with our programs. Great. Right. And um, I wanted to say we had an amazing spring uh, with the assistance of the NEH grant. Uh, and some of those programs were just so inspiring. Marco Jefferson, Pulitzer Prize winning author for her memoir uh, about uh, identity, black culture, history. It was so moving. Uh, and also recently with Greg Saris for his becoming story uh, of his Native American identity and, uh, and really connecting again with history and land. And it was just such a powerful uh, author event. So we have a whole series of events that is continuing through the summer along with that, with the theme and also with civil rights. Um, also, I want to mention that upcoming June 16th is guess what? Bloomsday. Bloomsday. But it's not only Bloomsday, it's the 100th anniversary of the publication of James Joyce's Ulysses in all its grandeur. This is going to be a citywide celebration. It's called Blooms Bay. So what a great title. And it's going to include venues, San Francisco Public Library, Mechanics Institute, the Irish Cultural uh, Consulate uh, next door, uh, City Lights Bookstore. So there are gonna be events all over the city, but I wanna give you a heads up on what's happening here. 
On the 16th, that's a Thursday, we will have a 12 o'clock Zoom event, which is a literary tribute with Catherine Flynn for her, her new book, uh, and a centenary edition with essays on Ulysses. It's going to be spectacular. We also have the publishers of this amazing book. I'm just going to hold it up for your viewing. It weighs a, it weighs a ton. Okay, you ready? This is an illustrated Ulysses, okay, out there, fans, um, with amazing and humorous and gorgeous illustrations by the Spanish illustrator, uh, Eduardo Arroyo, uh, deceased, just recently deceased. This is a spectacular book and the publishers will be on also the Zoom for this literary tribute. But then in the afternoon at five o'clock, we come back here in person for our Bloomsday celebration with live music and performances by local actors. And then we'll have, of course, our libations, our Irish cuisine, and then table readings with uh, the audience. So you have to join us on Bloomsday for the 100th anniversary, please. Uh, and uh, actually registration is open on the website. Um, also, I wanna make note of a few other programs coming up this summer. Um, on July 7th, we're going to have a program, Every Vote Counts, protecting our voting rights with representatives from the League of Women Voters and various organizations around town that are uh, shoring up voting rights in different communities across the Bay Area and across the country. So uh, please join us for that, July 7th. And then we're gonna come back again on site for Bastille Day, July 14th. And we're bringing back our favorite group, the Jazz Hot. So uh, it's gonna be our wonderful celebration. And so I hope you'll join us for that event. And then moving on for you birders out there, um, it's the public life of private birds of the Bay Area. And that's gonna be a very enjoyable uh, event. So just remember to bring your binoculars. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna turn this over to Miles Cooper, who's our programming librarian. Miles, take it away. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Um, hello. My name is Miles, as you heard. I'm programming librarian here at Mechanics Institute. Um, why I'm here is to talk about what's going on in the library and also give you some updates on writing uh, workshops that we have and also some classes and programming. Uh, before we start, I do wanna acknowledge the people who are joining us online. Hi, um, you're a little distracting here, but <laughs> there you are, okay. Um, so we have an uh, in-person event that's happening in this room for LGBTQ plus Pride Month. It's happening on June 8th at 6 p.m. called Play Orchestra Play, Play Something Sweet, Light, and Gay. And that is moderated by Matthew Felix. And it's a musical author event. Um, and it will include panelists like Vernon Keeve III, Lori Oost, Ostland, sorry, Alex Scott. Um, there will be tunes, short readings, and passages from their writing and questions and answers. So join us for that event celebrating Pride. We also have an upcoming writer's lunch happening on June 17th called The Art of Critiquing Fellow Writer. So join us for that. And we also have a class coming up in person it's happening in the library on Saturday, and it's called Get Invited to Read at Literary Conferences. I think you should join that. I think a lot of people here should join that. So we have a number of librarian-led classes, and those blossom out of questions we get at the reference desk. We get a lot of questions about how to use email or what's going on with my iPhone. So we have a number of classes, both virtual and in person. Some of our virtual classes that are happening again that have been successful are Understand Your iPhone, um, What's Streaming on Canopy, which is our awesome streaming service, where you can watch art house films, 
um, all kinds of video learning um, videos. We have a class called Flip Through Digital Magazines on our app Libby, which is great. You can download it from the App Store and give them your MI card credentials that are on the back of your card. And uh, we have some in-person classes. I mentioned those before, like email basics. Um, our book groups, can I talk about book groups? All right, our world literature book groups uh, are happening. We're in the process right now of nominating our new round of books. So if you're in that group or you want to join, send those two nominations to me by Memorial Day. I would really appreciate that. Okay, let's talk about the library. So we have simplified our Wi-Fi. Now when you swipe your card to go into the library, you can simply join our Wi-Fi. It's called Mechanics Institute. You no longer get that pop-up where you have to put in your long library card number. Um, those days are behind us for now. So come to the library and use our Wi-Fi. It's very fast. We've had a number of tours, virtual tours. They've been happening about every two weeks and they average about 10 people. We do do um, personal or, or small group tours. If you have a group of people, maybe you work with, maybe a, a birding, uh, we talked about birders earlier. If you have a birding group, you can uh, let us know, either Taryn Edwards or myself, and we will give you a little tour. Okay, we've been working in the library to do a big project with windowing. So in library land, we use this word windowing, uh, which is uh, a way to activate the collection to create better sight lines where we um, move books around and we, uh, we write at uh, kind of eye level, we have books turned around so you can see the cover and that helps people understand the collection better. You can understand uh, what books are in what area without just looking at the small spine or going on to our catalog. So that's been a big project. I know Craig has been working on that, Stephen. So thank you for helping with the windowing. We've also doubled the amount of physical books that we are buying. So we have more staff now working on processing those materials, cataloging them, making them available for you all. So please, next time you come to the library, don't bring one bag. I see a lot of people here with one bag, bring two. We need you to bring more bags. And we have a new hire. We're very excited to welcome back Heather Miles, who's a member and uh, is back in the library working for us. Uh, she's helping with that windowing project. She's helping with processing and shelving. And also she's a brilliant um, mender of books. So she's taking some of our old books and making them uh, available for you all to use again. So she's great at that. Uh, so welcome, Heather Miles, back to the library. And now I think I'm going to hand it over to Kimberly, and we're going to take some questions from people here first, and then we'll take some questions that have appeared online. All right. Great. Thank you so much. That was great. Thank you, everyone, for sort of sharing everything. Do folks have any questions? Yes. I see headlines these days about um, librarians on the ramparts fighting the forces of book banning. There's only confirmed by the committee of librarians as everyday heroes. Um, what can we do so <laughs> what can we do so that uh, we're not just sitting back here? Letting librarians bear the brunt of preserving First Amendment rights. <laughs> That's a great question. For those of you on Zoom, the question was about book banning and the role that the librarians have taken in protecting First Amendment rights. Would a librarian like to answer that question firsthand? Um, <laughs> <laughs> This being an ownership library and public funds, so that um, you know, the process in place that a member wishes to challenge uh, a book, you know, you can hear it, you don't need anything. Uh, and we do need to listen, we will we'll hear the first out. That said, um, I and all the other librarians are doing quite a, a lot of work to curate the collection. We are 
paying attention to what people want to be. And we are trying to be fair to everybody and using the resources that we have to purchase books that the, the largest number of people are going to So uh, we don't actually have the sort of problems here that you see reported in, in uh, the media. Um, we could do an event featuring banned books. Um, that's a hypothetical possibility. We talk miles about that to see, uh, about highlighting that and uh, a lot of possibilities in terms of publicizing the issue of having discussions, uh, public discussions, uh, not even the issue itself as a uh, that we know has been banned. So that's where the members come in and uh, members introduce us to the bank and um, I think that would be a wonderful way to contribute uh, and to support librarians just generally, not just us. <laughs> Um, and it's important. But this one, this is an anecdote is that the famous verse of the Wilson was there in 1922. <laughs> Sorry, she's the mic. Speaking of acquisitions, is there any hope of getting, of adding notifications? About why books have come out, why books have not been banned. The question was about sort of um, if there have been book requests that have not been granted. And again, I will defer to another librarian. Okay, um, if there is a book that uh, someone is wondering why their purchase request was turned down, there are a number of factors that we look at. Uh, probably the most important is whether that particular book is going to be of interest to a, a large number of members. It'll circulate ideally. Uh, we look at the authority of the author their publisher, what they published before, uh, the intended audience of the book, the price of the book. I would say there are about 10 different factors, but I think the most important one, as I said, is we don't want to get a book that's too erudite, too scholarly, too specialized, where there may be a very limited audience, or a book that's so basic that we probably already have material in the collection that covers that subject area. So we try to strike a balance in that regard. Um, so I think it's a balancing act to some degree, as I said. So. Um, you were talking about increasing the hours. You were talking about increasing the hours. Yes. That will happen in whether it's Sunday hours. That's a great question. The question was about increasing hours and um, potentially returning to Sunday hours. So we are looking to increase hours as soon as we can do the staffing. As I mentioned earlier, it probably won't be opening uh, very early in the morning until the co noisy construction is done, but we were looking to open at least two evenings so that folks can come in after work and really have a longer span of time. In terms of Sunday hours, that's definitely something we're looking at in terms of strategic planning. We traditionally haven't had a lot of use um, and other membership libraries are not, most of them are not open seven days a week. So we're gonna be looking at that. Yeah, as well. The Sunday New York Times because no one is here on Sunday and it's being stolen. We we are looking at other opportunities for the New York Times. Does that anyone else want to also answer this question from the library perspective?
Okay, so the question was about the Sunday New York Times specifically. Um, so newspapers are tricky. If we're not here, if nobody here is here for the building really early in the morning, um, sometimes those newspapers don't get delivered. Um, the subscription for Sunday newspapers is uh, different than the subscription for the weekly uh, Monday through Friday papers for libraries. So that's something we're looking into. I know we are looking into beefing up our New York Times subscription. I think Bobby had an email about that recently. So we are looking at ways to expand um, those newspapers and our holdings. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, do we have any questions online? We haven't taken any online questions. Taryn, can you tell us? We have Taryn, our colleague here running the Zoom. Yes, there are a couple of questions. Um, one by Tom uh, Lacker. I just call him Tom. <laughs> Tom was wondering, what is the plan for the data bar space? That's a great question. So one of our ground floor um, tenant spaces has been vacant. There was, there was a previously a bar there and during COVID, obviously a lot of restaurants and bars had to close. We are currently looking for a tenant to come in there and we are, we are using a leasing broker to help us um, vet some potential folks and hopefully have someone in. It's a very challenging commercial real estate market, as probably most of you know. Um, but you know, I've heard of a couple of recent developments in the neighborhood, so we're hopeful that this this coming year we'll be able to to um, potentially get a tenant. All right, and then there is one other question by George: Is there any possibility that Cinema Lit will get a Zoom component? A great question. So the question was, will Cinema Lit get a Zoom component? As I mentioned, that NEH programming uh, funding that we received was both to create more opportunities to hear from um, diverse uh, filmmakers and artists and writers. Another piece of it was to increase our capacity to do hybrid uh, events. So for instance, if we did Cinema Lit, for, you know, folks who want to come can come here and enjoy the movie and have a glass of wine and some popcorn and for folks who perhaps don't want to come in person could watch the movie ahead of time and then have the conversation and dialogue be uh, on zoom so that is definitely something we're looking at we are in the process of recruiting for an av specialist so that we can do more of these hybrid events any other online questions well carol simmons had a question about um uh, whether a, a library director will be hired. Sure. So the question was if a library director will be hired. And this is something that I mentioned in terms of strategic planning. We really looked at sort of our staffing structure and what we were looking to do in the next few years and really determined that the library director position was such a vital position that it really grew a lot over the last you know, 10 to 20 years and became a much broader sort of role. And so as part of that, we decided that we were going to take the responsibilities that the library director was overseeing and split those into the library operations and library programming. And so we are recruiting for a senior director of programming and outreach to be able to um, centralize our programming, whether it's library programming or events or chess, so that we can leverage all the successes we have in different areas and really be able to grow our programming, which was a big uh, piece of what we heard from members was that they really appreciated our programming and wanted to see even more programming. So that's, that's strategically what we're doing right now. Any other questions? Yes. John, uh, more mundane or mundane note. Um, I want to know if there's anything in the pipeline that might bring a supply of water to the chess room. Now, some chess players up there, like they don't really care, but there's a um, melody that would like water. In my case, I have a selfish motive because um, I'm 77. I walk in the train, I've got COPD, so it's a real ordeal to get to uh, fall over the elevator and catch an elevator down to the third floor. Yes. So I'm just hoping that something humanistic would be done because there's a, a precedent was set 
uh, many, many years ago to have water supply in the chest room. Sure. And at the end, oh, I started COVID. It was there. And we, came, we came back for the Tuesday night marathon tournaments. No more water. And I've been catching black and static from the staff members that I uh, touch base with. And their attitude seems to be it's our way or the highway. Okay. So the question was about um, returning water to the chess room, and I, I I understand your concern. And we, you know, we I was just actually discussing this today. I think there's a number of options. One is that we can set up water stations in the chess room, in addition, um, and so that it's easily accessible. Uh, we did, we had some issues with the water cooler that we had there before, so it was it was disengaged, and we did remove it. But that doesn't mean that we, you know, we have a kitchen right here. We can definitely set up water stations so that folks can don't have to leave the chest room in order to get water. water fountain would be really great. Yeah, I don't know if we can do that in terms of our piping and everything, but we will definitely make sure folks can get fresh water. Yes. Yes, we do. We still do have some print newsletters. If you're not receiving it and you'd like to receive one, we were getting a lot of feedback that folks were asking that they preferred email. And so we do have a few printed out in the library. But if you do want one, please let me know. We will make sure to send you one. Um, we were just trying to sort of be ecological in terms of not wasting paper when folks didn't want to necessarily get printed ones. But we can do that. When does the newsletter come out? That should be out in the next couple weeks. I mean, is there a definite, like, what day of the month for the specific upcoming events? Usually it's within the first week of the new quarter that it comes out. So and I'm not sure. Is not right, it's quarterly. So the week, oh, are you talking about the weekly list, sir? Well, I was just thinking it would be nice to have a weekly newsletter. Okay. Email would be fine. Right. So we know events of the week. This would be on here and sure. schedule on the Sure. Um, yes, we can do that. We do have a weekly listserv. So if you're not receiving our weekly update of what for, we usually send it out on Sunday morning around 11 a.m. So if you're not on that email list, feel free to give me or anyone else here your email and I will make sure you're added to that list. Sure. Kimberly. Yes, we have a question coming online from Tom again. You mentioned briefly the strategic planning process and his question asks, over the next three to five years, what will be the focus areas of the Institute? That's a great question. We're not quite, the question was about the strategic plan and what will be the focus areas. Uh, we're not quite done yet. <laughs> so I don't, I don't wanna get in front of it too much, but I can say that it's really focused on making sure that we are sustainable, making sure that we are continuing to enhance our programming and services to everyone. And also, you know, making sure that um, we are, you know, keeping folks engaged and really wanting to make sure that, that we are getting feedback and able to, to meet the needs that you're expressing. All right, and then there's, to piggyback on that, there's a question from Paul asking if there are any plans to spruce up the interior of the building, including furnishings and the elevator, which show signs of deferred upkeep. Yes, we do have a pretty aggressive. So the question was about whether we are planning to do some uh, improvements uh, interiorly. I believe you said one of the elevators. Is that correct, specifically? He mentioned building interior, furnishing, and elevators. Okay, building interior, furnishing, and elevators. We have been doing that on a continual basis. I, I know folks probably remember right before COVID, we replaced a number of the chairs in the library. We are also um, doing continually looking at you know, renovating different areas and making sure that we are upkeeping it. Um, and, um, you know, that is part of our continual uh, capital plan that we've been doing. And this year we do have a plan to do some building improvements as well as some tenant improvements. But if folks have really pressing things that they think we should take a look at, please feel free to let us know and we can de definitely uh, prioritize some of those projects. Great. Any other questions? Yes. Can I bring him down sometime to have a tour or will we have to go and find a Okay. 
The question was, if there's a friend that you'd like to bring to check out MI, you know, is that possible or do you have to buy a membership? Absolutely. If you have someone who wants to visit, just let, you know, let folks know, bring them in, give them, you know, and if, they, if you, they'd like a tour by a staff member, just let us know. We can definitely do that. But if you just want to show them around, we definitely encourage folks to do that. Um, thanks for sending the child. He's an editor. Yes. Okay. I told him about the Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And if you have any questions like that or want to set up a personal tour or anything, just feel free to reach out to a membership and we can make sure that, that everything's ready to go when you want to come by. Yeah, great. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Questions were about the chess room and specifically, let me make sure I captured it all correctly. Um, the first was um, looking at whether um, the, the chess room could be open later, I believe, in the evenings. And then the second piece was looking at um, the the, um, the doing the lectures again, you said on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So we have, in terms of lectures and classes, a lot of the chess um, activities have been virtual, but we are looking to bring those back in person. So it's definitely something we're looking to do. In terms of chess room hours, it's definitely something we're looking to do as well as we expand the library hours and we have you know a lobby attendant and everything, we can uh, look at possibly extending those hours as well. You know, we, we like to have someone there to answer questions or to give a tour, uh, but, but we can explore how to sort of make sure that there's coverage there as well. So when folks come into the chess room, they're greeted by someone and can have a, can, can sort of engage a bit around that. Did I, did I answer all of your questions? Yeah, okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. It's called Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu. And what it is, is it's a program where they have a list of about, I can't remember, 30 or 40 books. And you pick a book and you say, I'm proposing that this, you know, we as an organization will do a number of programs around it. So we basically are proposing that we'll do some author events, a film series, and partner with the Chinese Historical Society and some other partners to be able to host collaborative events in the community over the year. And hopefully we'll have the author be able to come up as well, but we're still trying to figure that out. We just we just heard about it. And um, it's something that's very exciting. It's a nice, it's, it's really a, a very interesting way to integrate a lot of our different programs around one theme. Is Charles he, he, I'm not sure where he's from. He's in LA right now, but he went to UC Berkeley. He's actually an attorney by training. So um, I believe he has ties to the Bay Area. Yes, absolutely. You, you mentioned it in the newsletter. Yes. <laughs> yes, well, I was going to ask about uh, an event that you had years ago in the library. And I think it was met by a, a member who was an architect. And we used to take a visiting tour in the area about the buildings that are worth, worth admiring and what they represented in the time that it was built. Sure. 
the question was about sort of, I believe our walking tours. And that is definitely something that um, Taryn Edwards, who's on, who's on the Zoom side of this, has been working on sort of bringing back. I think it's a really wonderful way to engage the members and get them to see other historic and significant uh, landmarks in San Francisco. So definitely to stay tuned, that is something we wanna bring back for sure. Great. Excellent. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you all very much. We really, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, I wonder, I noticed a lot of great events during the day uh -huh. and very good at night. Of course, I do the movie night. Um, is, there, is there some plan to really make more events at night in some of the writing groups? Right. Sure. Laura, do you want to take that? The question was about um, doing more events in the evenings. Um, actually, we have a combination of day and evening. Um, a lot of the writers groups events are that Taryn is doing is uh, noontime and during the day. Most of the event programs with author programs are in the evening. So just check our website as well as Cinema Lit on Friday nights. So um, actually, historically, most of our author events are in the evening. Uh, also, if there is an author that is in England or in Paris, as we've had this year, we have to do it at noontime because it's going to be nine o'clock at night where they are. And, and that would be the exception. So check the calendar. And that's a great point to bring up is one of the things, you know, I think everyone's very excited and it's wonderful to see people in person as well as on Zoom and we're trying to do this hybrid piece. But we also, you know, one of the sort of uh, things that came out of COVID in a, in a positive way, obviously it was very traumatizing for, for the community, but you know, we did, we were able to engage more national and international audiences. And that's something we do wanna keep. We wanna be able to maintain those connections. Uh, and I think it adds a lot of benefits for, for the members to be able to sort of engage with these other things. And in addition, uh, we got much more involved with our um, affiliate membership libraries throughout the country. And so we've been doing a lot of joint programming there as well. So do, you know, do take a look at some of those opportunities. There have been some really exciting literary and historical events that other Athenaeums and libraries have been offering, as well as chess clubs. There's been a lot of international and national tournaments and um, friendly and competitive. And so it's been really a, a, nice, a nice opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, there's still plenty of food and drinks, so please enjoy and feel free to hang out for a while. Thank you. Could you turn oh. your laptop around so we can see what the room looks like? Kimberly? What's that? Uh, sorry, I just muted you. Um, th there was a request to turn the laptop around so that we can see in the audience what uh, the um, what the crowd is like. And what it looks like everyone is going straight back to the food. <laughs> Wish I were there. <laughs> Yeah, me too. But it's been fun doing the Zoom with me, right? <laughs> you bet. Yeah, we're just trying to make the best of both worlds right now. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask me? Because I don't know how useful it is to just watch people from afar uh, gathering their coats and stuff. <laughs> um, so you're welcome to turn your mic on um, if you want and ask me directly. But otherwise, I thought maybe I would close out the Zoom because I think most people have left. Any other questions before I close out the Zoom? No, all right, well, I hope that you had a good, sorry, I was waving, but my library got in the way. Uh, hope to see you at the Institute. If you are interested in the tour, let us know. Happy to take you and your pals around. Um, meanwhile, the uh, um, uh, virtual tours are coming along nicely, and it looks like Linda wants to ask a question. No, or are you just waving at me? Okay, bye, Linda. <laughs> All right, any last minute questions? Feel free to ask me. Hi, Paul. You have a question, right? Hi, Taryn. What's going on, Paul, in the chess room? In the chess room. Uh, we're, you know, we're hanging in there. We're doing good. Thank you. Great, great. Well, I'm doing well in the library too, but I was just telling our friends here that I'd like to see more of them in person. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're getting more people in the chess room. We are, people are coming back. Great. Yeah, it's, uh, we really need it because just, just to keep the staff feeling happy, I think. Um, and, and it's good for the soul. It's good for the soul. I mean, I want to feel fulfilled and I want to help people. I want to help mechanics members. I want to help people interested in joining mechanics. And if they're not there, I get sad. <laughs> it's lonely when you're by yourself. Right? <laughs> <laughs> At the reference desk. Exactly. So, yes, um, friends and members, come on down to 57 Post and... Um, Meanwhile, hope to see you there. I think maybe I'm gonna close the Zoom now. Bye. Bye, see you. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll see you soon. Bye now. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks. <laughs>